3D printers, the second industrial revolution? Question mark. We're all going to have a 3D printer in our house. That printer is going to transform our home. And what we're going to be able to do is print out toys and tools and equipment in any color or any size at a push of a button. Everybody's going to become a designer. I, I just lost my job, you know. <laughs> well, not really. You know, don't run to a store just yet to buy your 3D printer. There is a problem with this idea is that there is a learning curve associated with 3D printing. You first have to buy the printer. Most of the time, you have to assemble it yourself. Then you have to learn how to do 3D software, how to use that. Then you have to download files that take a lot of time. Then you have to do the actual printing, which can take, which can take hours or even days to complete. And you know the average consumer simply doesn't have the ambition nor the time to do that. So while some people will, you know, we're not going to print out our toys and our instruments and our electronics just yet. Unless 3D printing is solving a pain point, one single thing, very well, in a very good and effective way, then it could have mass market appeal. On the other hand, if you are a hobbyist or you're deeply entrenched in the maker culture or the maker movement, after this presentation, run to your first store and go buy a 3D printer. You will love it. In industry, any industry, the chances are that 3D printing is somewhere going to be used in your pipeline. So if you are not looking at it, please start investigating it because others are going to do it and you know, you're going to run behind and you're going to lose market share. Is 3D printing going to revolutionize the world? You bet it will, but not in the Futurama, I'm going to print things at home and I'm going to make my own spoon kind of way. <laughs>